Hold hot coffee for me, relaxing. Every time I went back to my childhood getaway, every time I'd go for a walk, I felt like half the people knew me. You didn't feel afraid to say hello to strangers because everyone here was at home. Now, I don't drink coffee. I don't like the taste. I don't need the caffeine. But when I was here, at what seemed like my own little retreat, I'd pour myself a really weak cup, sweeten it up with anything that would sweeten up my sweet stock. And I'd sit at a table outside in the morning to write, or I'd sit at the bench and watch retired couples play round robin doubles tennis. They'd ask me if I'd like to join them. But no, I was happy here with my insanely weak coffee that was just warm enough to warm my spirits and keep me company as I enjoyed the morning breeze and the connection I felt with everyone around me. Mm -hmm. um, I do I'm going to share with you, which seems fitting for what I'm going to talk into later. This one is called Ghosts. A poet in a cafe sees dead ancestors. Ghosts, stop haunting me. a good tie-in to me talking to you a little bit about a feature that I'm going to be in tomorrow. I'm super excited to be reading my short story, Crazy, at Kick Butt Coffee tomorrow night, and I'd like to give you a little piece of it, I suppose, here. Oh, so you guys know this is a woman that's in an insane asylum because brutal sliding, blah, 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 I won't get into that. I've been in here in this institution now for like three and a half years, and I, I just want to see like some some TV to watch the news. I mean, I don't even like TV, but I just want to see what's happening in the real world. I, I just want to see like what, you know, the weather is like, because I ain't even seen the sun in like two and a half years. I haven't been able to run my hands along the ground. I haven't been able to feel the breeze against my skin. And, and it's hard. I, I know I've got a lot of healing to do, but I haven't really thought about doing it. I mean, what have I got to heal for anyway? <laughs> what, to get out of here and go into prison? Then I have to watch my back all the time from all these abuses from all these guards over there. I have to watch my back every second of the day. At least here, people watch my back for me. <laughs> They think that everything and anything in the world can harm me, even myself. So they're so protective that nothing can go wrong, unless it goes wrong in my own mind. I really wish anybody would be able to make it tomorrow night because I'm going to be sitting and doing this long monologue and sitting on a bed and playing solitaire and being a crazy woman. And if you guys don't think I'm crazy to be in this, I think you have to see this to get an idea. <laughs> and thank you, thank you, thank you. And she was practicing this at Circle Brewery, <laughs> and there was a couple sitting next to us, and, and, he, he, and he said, well, I'll, I'll listen to you, your poem if you listen to my little pitch. And he was doing a pitch for the, um, the pets, you know, the esc or, uh, what do you call them, partner dogs, or whatever they call that. For, to, if you die for something, you'll get them. Yeah, therapy dogs, oh, that's okay. it. Yeah. Therapy dogs. And, um, so, after one, so, so she them. reads her whole thing crazy, and it turns out his wife, who is retiring this coming week, works for Child Protective Services as a psychologist, <laughs> and therapist, and he works for the Texas State Prison System oh, as a therapist. It's like, this is a real story, I'm like, no, I gotta do this with this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really hysterical that we happen to talk to two people. Now, is this real? <laughs> I know, what is, it was just stunning. What's the inspiration for your story? Yeah, explains why you're